Hey guys, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Wherever you are guys, I hope you're having a really good Sunday. Uh, it's the end of the week, it's the last day of the week, and we're going to build some keyboards. Well, one keyboard, to be precise, but yeah. Uh, it's going to be a whole thing, we're going to build a keyboard, start to end. And we're going to talk about keyboards, and we're going to talk about the store a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good fun time. I hope everyone had a great weekend anyway. Uh, I can see that Kodo's got the first today, saying yes. Well done. Uh, Anarchy's here as well. He says uh, he let Kodos get first. Um, the joke is Kodos that, uh, that Anarchy gets first most weeks. Most most streams, in fact. Most streams. Um, Anarchy wishing everyone a nice weekend as well. We've also got uh, Storzness, Quapper, Thrax here as well. Uh, Obi. Uh, hey guys, welcome to the stream. We'll be starting in a few minutes. Uh, we're building a all POM keyboard today. So this keyboard is milled out of uh, pieces of POM. This is not a stacked POM keyboard. This is actual uh, milled POM keyboard. It's a Lin Whale. If you guys have seen the uh, the Lin Works um, Whale series, that's what it is. That's what we're building today. Uh, you guys are going to get to choose the switches. Now, normally when I do the switch cho choice, you guys get like four or five choices. There's only two today, sadly. Uh, but you can help me pick, in fact, sorry, there's three today. There's three today. But you can help me pick which switches we're going to put in the build. And then once we finish the build, you can help pick which keycaps we're going to put on there as well. So, yeah, I hope that's all good. Um, how do you like the new desk mat as well, guys? If you look in the, the little, little top camera here, uh, this is the new desk mat. This is one of the Kanagawa Great Wave desk mats. These all came in on Friday. So if you bought one of these through the store, they will be shipping on Tuesday. I'm not working tomorrow. I need to take a day for personal reasons. But on Tuesday, these will all ship out, apart from this version, which is a charcoal version, which is getting replaced. So if you bought a charcoal version, that's going to be a little bit of way away, unfortunately. But the Mizu, Zen Mizu, Mint, uh, Zen Mint, and Zen Charcoal will all ship on Tuesday. It's pretty clean, right? You'll see it proper when we uh, when we move up to the other one. It's brand new. I, it still has that new smell. It still has that new new desk mat smell. So I'll uh, I'll roll that out uh, next week, and, and you guys will see it. We will also have extras. These particular charcoal ones will be sold as B stock on the store, so they will be a little bit cheaper. Uh, but there is extras of all of them. Yes, uh, I was just saying, Truman. Yeah, there is extras of all group buys. Um, anything that we ever run on the store as a group buy will always have extras, so they will be in stock. The only ones that won't be in stock immediately are the charcoal ones, but when they do go in stock, they'll be both A stock and B stock, depending on whether you want the one that's got a slight misprint. Now, what I'm talking about, I'll show you later on when we uh, do a close-up of the desk. Unusual, thank you very much uh, for being here. Thank you, man. Obi says, my last new desk mat smell was petrol from the Amazon desk mat I got. Nice, nice. Um, this one smells, like, it has that new car type smell. So if you've ever got in a brand new car, this is kind of what that smells like. So it's kind of like that chemically, the carpet's giving off scent. That's the kind of smell from it. But yeah, always, uh, always extras, always extras, guys. Okay, who else have we got here? Uh, we've got Truman here as well. Uh, Rexathon's here and Unusual too. Thank you very much. You come take them yourself. Right, okay, I mean, people are welcome to visit, but you have to buy. You can't just take. You have to buy. The best smell. Yeah, I love new car smell. Yeah, I love new car smell. Like, like going going into a new car. Like when I got the Tesla a couple of weeks ago, even now, even now, if I open up the Tesla door, it still smells like a new car, like three weeks later. It's really, really nice. It's really nice. Uh, oh, Omar. Right, okay. Right, okay. Got you. I know who you are now. I know who you are. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, yeah, so uh, as well as that, next weekend, next Saturday, in fact, we're going to have a big in stock style a stale sale so there's loads of stuff that's coming back into stock so we're going to sell a load of extras first of all so there'll be extras of gmk midnight rainbow there'll be extras of gmk black lotus there'll be extras extras of sa rocket there'll be some small numbers of extras of a few infinity sets such as islander ether pastel um a few other bits that are lying around as well i've got all sorts of bits lying around the workshop so the idea is that we're going to put them all together and just put them all on the website next saturday uh, as well as that there's going to be pretty much every desk mat we've ever run including some more of them uh, some of the more new ones such as the desk mats from gmk strike around two uh the desk mats from gmk shan shui i just need to clear out space so all of these are going to be in stock next saturday there's going to be a full list later on in the week. Um, I'll start to drip feed them through Instagram and Discord over the next couple of days. There's also going to be a huge range of pre orders as well. Pretty much any GMK set or other key set that we've run in the past six months that isn't already on the pre order list will have a small number of uh, pre orders added onto the website this week too. So we are going to make some big changes as well there. So lots and lots coming, guys, on the store if you are interested in that. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Like, I'm really, really excited. I think there's something like. 5,000 desk mats over like 50 designs or something 
it, it's kind of nuts just how much we've got going on in the store. Uh, I think there's something like five or six different key sets as well as all other bits and pieces, some small artisan stuff and um, PCBs, tiny PCBs. We're going to use one today. There's going to be some tiny PCBs on the store. There's going to be artisan cases. There's going to be all sorts, all sorts. Basically, we're just going to put a ton of stuff on the store. Everything that's floating around the workshop that I can sell that I haven't got around to selling, it's going to be up for sale. There we go. Wayward Fox is here as well saying, hey, hey, glad to see you. Uh, how's the Tesla treating you? Do you know what? Right. <laughs> I low-key love it. I always said that I wouldn't enjoy driving a car that was automatic or that wasn't a manual transmission. The Tesla's changed my mind on that, like like in a big way. Like I've driven a lot of cars. I've owned a lot of cars. I think I've owned some like 50 cars over the years. But the Tesla's done something to me that I don't know how to react to. I went, I got in my wife's car, which is a pretty nice car. It's a fairly modern two-year-old uh, Mazda CX-5. I drove that yesterday and moving from the Tesla into a manual transmission car, I was confused for about five minutes. Like I, I just could not get my head around. Why is the car not braking automatically? Why do I need to do anything other than accelerate? I, I just couldn't get my head into it. Once I got going, I was fine, but it took a, it took a few minutes to get around to it. So um, yeah, the Tesla's done things to me that I wasn't expecting it to do. And I think it's, uh, it's very interesting. I love the car, love the car, but yeah, it's made some big changes. Captain, hey man, thanks for being here. Zombie as well, hey guys, thank you very much for being here. Uh, the wife and I both had the same reaction when we got our electric car too. They really are amazing. Dude, like, it's on charge outside. Like, I don't have to drive to a fuel station anymore. I just literally put it on charge. It's on charge here at the workshop. It's dead easy. A lot of sarcasm. Thank you so much for the four months. Uh, four months of glorious beard love. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, the beard's going for a trim on Tuesday morning, actually. Uh, Tuesday morning. I'm going to be in the workshop for an hour, nipping out to the barbers and then coming back in. Uh, JQ27, thank you so much for the uh, the sub as well. He says, good morning. Good morning, man. I hope it's a good day for you. Is that Does that mean it's Monday where you are? Because that sucks. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, Kajira, hello. Thanks very much for being here, man. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Tesla has, has changed how I interact with cars in a big way. Like, I still have like nine or ten cars now, but the Tesla has changed what I want to drive. Like, of all the cars I have, I literally want to drive the Tesla and the Datsun and the Datsun pickup truck. And that's it. Out of out of all the cars I have, that's the, those are the only three I want to drive. Like, all of the other cars, it's like, yeah, I'm not really interested anymore. So, yeah. The one thing I will say about the Tesla Model 3 as well is I only have the standard range plus. I don't have the performance package. But it's like owning a supercar covered up by a family estate car that's that's what it's like it's it's just like a supercar covered up by a family saloon and i i can't put into words what the performance is like it's just unreal it's unreal anyway it is what it is it is what, I, I love the car it's on charge right now it's literally just outside the door there um and yeah i love it i i i'm gonna try and make sure that the wife gets the one and when her car comes up for renewal as well does the central screen ever distract you? No, not in the slightest. Like, not in the slightest. Like, it's just just, just cruising all the time. The power's there. You set everything up before you go. You don't really need to touch it. Like, I glanced at it for the sat-nav, and that's about it. Like, it's just there. Would you say a manual gearbox is more fun to drive than an auto? I would have said that until I drove the Tesla. Yes, 100%. Like, I always liked being in control of the car and knowing that I was in control of where the rev range was, how much how much power I was able to put down and how I could react to certain situations on the road. I always loved that about a manual. I still do. I still do. Like, I love driving the Datsun, uh, the orange one, the 240Z, uh, the Fair Lady. But when I've driven automatics before, I've always found that they changed gears when I wasn't expecting it to or it did something I didn't like. Like, it did a gear change when I wouldn't have done or if I want to drop down a gear, I can't because of the mode it's in. Then you have to put it into sport mode, which for some cars means stopping and pulling over. Whatever. Flappy paddling or whatever. Flappy paddles are fine, actually. But what the Tesla does is, because the Tesla doesn't have any gears, it doesn't have an automatic box, it's not doing any of that. It's just sheer power all the way through the torque range. It, it, it's kind of changed me as a person. It Genuinely, it's changed me as a driver. It's kind of nuts. Uh, Mac Mutant, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Uh, and that has started the hype train, I think. Uh, so uh, there you go, guys. Now's the time. If you're going to resub this stream, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. Uh, let's catch up with chat. Uh, nope, UK, but sleep pattern is screwed you to head playing up. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, we talked about the manual gearbox. Automatics have got... Nod Hell, thank you so much for the sub. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, 
Automatic's gotten quite good in recent years. Yeah, I so the most recent automatic I've driven is probably the new Alfa Romeo Giulia, um, which is a stunning car actually. It's really good. Uh, as well as that, I've also driven the Kia. Oh God, what's it called now? Stinger, the Kia Stinger, and I really enjoyed the Kia Stinger as well. I'm not sure I'd ever buy either of those though. I would buy another Tesla. That's that's where I've got to. Um, have you played any of the games in the car or waiting somewhere like charging? No, but I have watched. <laughs> I have watched Netflix in the car. Uh, any news on Jim K. Hannock? Uh, yeah, the group buy is just finished. It'll be a year until it gets produced, right? I'm not sure what news you want. I'm not sure what you, news you want, Smith. Uh, but let me know what news you want. Uh, is there a bit of a difference between an engine and motor feel, though? A motor would just go. Engines have to shift between uh, gears. Uh, yeah, so, so Jack, the, basically, you know when you're in a manual transmission car and you hit third gear and you're about four and a half thousand rpm and that's when the car really wants to shift and you can feel that power or even in second gear when you started off and you've gone through first gear too quick you're in second gear you're about to try and get the power down you hit about three and a half thousand revs you take it up to six seven thousand then you, the power starts to wane well between that sweet spot you've basically got that everywhere from zero to 150 miles an hour it is nuts it's insane how a tesla drives like you can accelerate at what feels like the same pace from 0 to 60 as you can from, from 60 to 100. It's just absolutely nuts. No matter how fast you're going, if you press that accelerator a little bit firmer, woof, you push back in your chair and off you go. It is crazy. It's crazy. Um, this is car stream now. It's car stream now. Alphas are such lookers. Yeah, it's actually my friend's car that I've driven. Um, he comes and actually details all my cars for me. You've probably seen him on my Insta stories. He's called David. He's a really nice guy. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Pom keyboard, yeah, you'll see the Pom keyboard in a couple of seconds. Uh, just talking about cars at the minute, but I'll be opening my Pom keyboard up in a few minutes and showing you that. Uh, yeah, about 18 months away, Smith. About 18 months away. If you look on the product listing, it says on there when it's expected to go. If you look on the website, you can check updates and you can check the Notion pages, and it will also show on the Notion pages when it's expected to ship on there as well. Um. <clears throat> oh, oh. Jordan, thank you so much for the sub. Thank you, man. I hope you're enjoying your coffee mug, Jordan. Uh, for those that you don't know, if you subscribe here, you get access to a secret channel on my Discord server where we do a few giveaways. And Jordan actually recently won a prototypist coffee mug. So this is a fully prototypist branded coffee mug that he won. Um, so yeah. Smith, thank you very much for the follow, man. I appreciate that. Wayward Fox says, is there ever a stream that isn't a car stream? Hey, maybe I should do an actual stream where I'm working on the car. Would you guys watch that? Would you guys watch me bleed brakes on a car or change some door covers on a car or ch install a new steering wheel or something? Would you guys watch that? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll do a workshop stream on it. Uh, JQ says, the only electric I've driven is an I-Pace. Those things are fun. Yeah, I've driven the I-Pace. It's a good car. Uh, hopefully it won't be a few more years until we have a lot more cheap options available. Shame knowing that this country is going to take 50 years until the infrastructure is there. Sadly, not everyone can charge at home or work. No, I agree. I don't think it's going to take 50 years. If you look at the amount of charges that are everywhere these days, there is there is a lot. Like, it, it doesn't seem like how there is that many until you start to look for them. Like, literally, the pub that's just... If you if you Google where Prototypist Keyboards is, you'll see that there's a pub about 30 seconds walk away. There is two charging ports in the pub. You go to any Ikea, there's charging ports in the car park. You go to our local Asda, there's charging ports in the car park. You go to our local KFC, there's charging ports in the car park. And these are open to any... This isn't Tesla superchargers. This is just normal chargers for any electric vehicle. So I think that the infrastructure is getting there. As long as you don't live somewhere rural... The infrastructure is there already for cars. If I couldn't charge here or at home, I could charge at maybe 30 places within a square mile. It's it's kind of scary how many places there are to charge now. And it's uh, it's getting it's getting much, much easier. There's loads. There's, I, I didn't realize how many there were until I started looking for them. And I just keep finding more and more and more. Just driving around and I think, oh, there's one there now. Oh, there's one there now. I found some in the Tesco car park the other day. And I've been parking next to them or next to where they are for the past four years. Never noticed them. I know they're there now. I noticed them. So, yeah. Uh, the keyboard on the desk at the moment is a Heine TKL1. You'll see it when we flip cameras in a second. Uh, the mouse pad is uh, is the new Kanagawa Wave desk mats from uh, that we do we run in group by. They arrived a couple of days ago and they're shipped out next week. So extras will be for sale next Saturday. 
Uh, Beige Lamp says the potion in the background is really nice. Is it custom made? Yes, Crash designed the potion in the background for my keyboard.eu. It features a ton of content creators, vendors, designers, manufacturers, uh, all in one image. There's all sorts on it. So you can pick that up from my keyboard.eu, I think. I think they're going to start selling it. Rexathon, thank you so much for the sub, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. You didn't realize there are so many now. There are so many, so many car chargers. So many. Um, Proto Drivers. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should do that. Like, I could do some streams because there is a load of stuff that I want to change on the Tesla. I need to do some fixes to my wife's car, um, uh, install some new audio equipment and stuff. Uh, I've got all of the trucks that I work on. I've got two pickup trucks that are vintage that I work on. I've got the Datsun that I work on that's vintage. I've got a couple of vintage Peugeots. I've got the new Nissan P130 from 1967 I'm on a boat on the way here. There's lots I could show you on car streams if you want to see. Uh, did you see the Singer 911 DLS and Top Gear? That thing has probably become my unobtainable dream car. Yeah, so I used to own uh, a 912 a long time ago, but it was really rough. Like, it was really rough. Um, and I know someone who's selling one right now, which made me think about buying it. And I didn't. I didn't. It was probably a little bit too much money for me. Where do I ship from? Here. This room. Right. Well, not this room, but the workshop literally through the door there. Um, if you Google prototype his keyboards, you'll see exactly where I am, Truxy. You'll see exactly where I am. Prototype is keyboards just on the outskirts of Bradford in the UK. That's where we ship everything from. Car stream would be good. Nice. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll work something out. We'll do a car stream. Okay, we've talked enough. It's time to show you guys the build. Let's uh, flip over um, to the other view. Here you go. So this is the desk mat. How cool is that? This is the keyboard. This is the Heine TKL one that we built last week uh, with OG uh, Yugoslavian dice ups. These are OG Cherry Yugoslavian dice ups. Uh, it does have a matching numpad as well, which we built too. So there we go. Dang, UK, I'm in EU. I ship everywhere to the world. Anywhere in the world you can buy from me and I ship there. It is the Kanagawa desk mat, yeah. Great stream last week. I love this board. Mel doesn't like it. Mel came inside this desk to print off some labels the other day. She didn't like the keyboard, um, so she got rid of it. Yeah, you can pick and choose whether you pay VAT at checkout. Like, if you if you don't want to pay VAT, you can pay imports like you would from anywhere else in the world, or you can pick and choose to pay VAT if you're in the EU at checkout. If you look, there'll be a more expensive shipping option that says with duties and taxes included, and that means that you paid the VAT to me, I sort it out with the tax man, and you just get the item when it arrives. Nice and simple. I did get the balls from Mole Ceramics. Shall I grab those? Let me grab those really quickly. They're just through here. What's that? Okay, sorry about that, guys. These are the bowls from Mole Ceramics. So Mole is another streamer that we found uh, just randomly and followed her and, and gave her a um a raid but she made all of these super cool bowls for me like there's a little logo how cool are these she made loads of them as well there's another couple in the workshop they've all got different designs on come on camera please focus there we go they're just super super nice let's say they've all got something a little bit different on them but they're just super cool so yeah i'm gonna i've already started to use some of these in the workshop uh, and there'll be some more dotted around the desk in the next week or two. <clears throat> Don't let your coffee go cold, so I, Yeah, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to drink it before it goes cold. Damn, the desk mat looks nice. Can't wait to mine. Okay, so what, the desk mats look great, but... What you can see on camera is this looks kind of purplish on camera and you can see here that there's like buildings um, They're very difficult to see in real life because this is black and the camera doesn't quite pick that up But it's very difficult to see these buildings in the background in real life and these kind of curved stripes don't exist on it in real life That's a camera artifact um, So these particular ones are being re 
printed and will be shipped out to me shortly. So this is just the charcoal ones. So the Zen Mizu, the Mizu, the Zen Mint, the Mint, and the Zen Charcoal will all ship as as expected. The charcoal ones will be waiting for replacements. Uh, so this is technically a B stock desk mat. Now, when I list the extras next week, I'll be listing all of them apart from the charcoal ones. The charcoal ones will come later on after they've been uh, replaced for the group buy orders. And then these B stock ones will be sold alongside the A stock ones as well. So there'll be, there'll be a few. Uh, if only EU vendors did the same for UK customers like you do for EU customers. Uh, okay, so it's a little bit more difficult than that. They can't do it the same way as I do it. So opting into the kind of the IOSS, which is kind of like the, okay, really put simply, you can opt in to pay the VAT for uh, EU customers, which I do and I can do. Um, if EU vendors want to sell to UK customers, they have to register for VAT in the UK, which is a whole big thing. And then they have to declare that VAT every three months and report it back. And it, it's a lot of extra work. So I can see why they don't want to do it. Like it's a big, big thing. It's a big thing. It's not easy for them to do it that way. <clears throat> Been looking for the back in eco or equivalent in the EU, but none. Yeah, so the back in eco is um, uh, mainly produced by Canon Keys. So it's just one of those things. Latte art stream when like my latte art is not great. Like that's a leaf, but you can barely tell. Um, I could do a latte stream. Like I could show you on stream how I do it, but yeah. Um, Brexit is a bitch. Uh, yes, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, okay, but in Denmark, I have to pay 25% of the item's price plus $25. But if I pay the VAT, I don't pay 25%, I pay like 17%. So the VAT rate in the UK, so let me, let me break this down for you. If you're in the UK, the price you see on the website is inclusive of VAT and it will show price underneath excluding VAT if you're in the UK. That's at 20% VAT. That I have to legally charge. I can't get around it. I have to charge it. Hold on, let's flip cameras. Let's flip back cameras for a second. If you're in the EU and you buy from my store, you see the price with no VAT in. Absolutely no VAT. When you get to checkout, based on your account address details and the address you're shipping it to, it will give you two choices for shipping. Either you can ship with uh, VAT excluding, you just pay the shipping cost. And that means you'll get an import bill when the item gets to you and you have to pay that bill yourself. Or alternatively, you can pick to pay duties and taxes paid shipping. That includes your shipping and all VAT and imports at your country's rate. So different people in different countries will see that VAT at different rates. If you're in Denmark and it's 25%, you'll see it with 25% VAT in there. If you're in, say, France and it's 17%, I'm making numbers up here, but if you're in France and, say, France was 17%, French people would see 17% there. But you have the choice when you check out from my store as to whether you want to pay the VAT and duties when you get the item and pay that to your courier or you can pay it to me and I'll take care of that for you. And you can do that via the shipping option. Dead simple, just those two choices. But I only do it for EU customers. I don't offer it for worldwide customers because it is a pain. Like it's really, really difficult to do. And it means a lot of paperwork to do, but I just want to help, help out the EU folks to make the transition a bit easier because it was easier last year, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. Around the world, people can use the, 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 you're just going to have to pay your import fees, my friend, outside of the EU. Um, that's the same as if you're buying from anywhere else, though, right? And there's nothing else I can do on that one, unfortunately. So there we go. That's that's it in a nutshell. I hope that makes sense. Okay, right. In the EU, there are not a lot of vendors that have a VAT number, so I have to resort to vendors from Asia and Con US, which results in more expensive shipping and such. Also, use of international shipping isn't the best for the environment. True. Okay, so I agree on both of those counts. Uh, just so you're aware, Prototypist is completely carbon neutral. Everything we ship is carbon neutral. Everything we use for packaging is carbon neutral. The uh, the bubble wrap that we use is made from recycled cardboard. The box is made from recycled cardboard. The tape we use is made from recycled papers. The business cards we print and include are made from recycled papers, uh, and we are completely carbon carbon neutral. Every single ounce of electricity that we use here is carbon offset. Everything that we buy from the workshop for the workshop is carbon offset, even down to the clothing that we wear when we're in the workshop. It's all carbon offset through a company called Tentry. Um, so, well, the clothing is through Tentry. Everything else is through other bits and pieces. So completely carbon neutral. So I fully agree. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see me stock unusual in the UK that you can't get hold of in the UK, just put it in the suggestions channel on the Discord and I will try and see if I can stock it, simple as that. Um, it's not a small carbon footprint. It's no carbon footprint. At the minute we're completely carbon neutral, 
but the aim next year is to go carbon net positive so we're actually going to be making reducing other people's carbon as well if that makes sense so yeah as a customer do i pay for your carbon neutrality well <laughs> I'm not sure if you mean that as a positive or a negative because yeah like when you like i don't take any money out of prototypists i make zero salary i make zero profit personally i don't take any dividends out of the company i don't make any payments i am completely uh, a volunteer owner of the company I, I don't make any money so all of the money that gets invested into pt through sales uh offsets the carbon neutrality of the company yes um because that's what any company who's carbon neutral does their profits pay to help them become carbon neutral uh, and all of the other profits get reinvested so i can buy more and more extras for every single group by the rents so there you go that's that's how it works like like the company can only pay for stuff with customers money right because customers invest in products that they want to buy and that gives the company money to then buy more products and to offset the carbon neutrality and for other companies to make a profit that's then shared between the staff and everything else but i don't get paid as a member of staff or, or, or as the owner i take zero salary and have no income at all um so there you go Thrax, there will be extras for everything. You don't have to ask it for any particular group buy. Every single group buy we run will have extras. Simple as that. In the future, we're all going to pay. Uh, yeah, we're all paying now. Your taxes are going. The, the taxes that you pay now to the government that you're of any country go towards paying for some carbon neutrality stuff. So yeah, there we go. Right, Let, we've, we've talked about enough about carbon neutrality. Um, let's let's try and get onto the uh, onto the build. Uh, four leaks? No, none. Okay, so let's talk about stabilizers. Today, we're gonna to be using Mechanisk stabilizers. Leandrin was kind enough to send me about five packets of these a little while ago, so that's what we're gonna be using today. Some nice Duroc V2 stabilizers in Mechanisk colors. When will JO1 extras go on sale? After the group by ships. The group by hasn't quite shipped yet because we're replacing the gaskets that were um, die cut for injection molded ones to make the experience better. So as soon as they arrive, J1s will ship, and then about a month later, J1 extras will be sold, I think. But I need to work out how that's going to work. I went to your website and it didn't say anything about import taxes of VAT. Uh, which country are you in, Cordos? Which country? Are you in? If you're in the UK, you'll just see the price with VAT included, and underneath it'll say VAT excluded. If you're anywhere else in the world, outside of the UK, you'll just see a price that's that's got no VAT included. The price that you see will have no VAT included. Let me show you. Let me show you. I can show you this real quick. Um, let me add a browser source. Let me see if I can do this really, really quickly. Ah, oh, I shouldn't be showing you that. Why is that not working? Ah, what's going on? What? No, it's because I have something in preview. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me remove that for a second. Right. Let me, let me, let me fix this. Let me fix this. Do do do. Okay, right, let me bring that back and let's make it search visible. Right, okay, this is the site as you'll see it, right? Okay, let's click on live group buys and you'll see here we've got PBT milkshake. Let's take a look at PBT milkshake. So what you see here in the UK is you see this bit up here. It says 69 pounds including VAT and then it has the price underneath which is 57.50 excluding VAT. If you're not in the UK, what you will see is you'll just see that 57.50. That's all you will see. You won't see that £69 including VAT, you'll just see the 5750 But that's only if you're outside the UK. So the site displays differently depending on whether you're inside the UK or outside the UK. If you're outside of the UK and then you buy something and add it to your cart, at checkout you'll have two shipping options. A cheap one that is just shipping, well I say cheap, you'll have a DHL one that's just shipping. You'll have another one that's more expensive by quite a lot that will say shipping with duties and taxes included. That's where I will pay your VAT for you. Simple as that. Nice and simple. Hope that helps. Mythical, 
Hey, thanks very much for being here. I've been good, thank you very much. I've been good. Watch leaks. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, from a company by called About Vintage, and it's their 1971 model. Uh, it's an automatic Swiss one. There you go. It's pretty nice. Just a, a relatively cheap one for the workshop. No, it's because I was playing around with potential new themes for the store, JQ, and I just had to turn that off. Uh, yeah, it was just a browser thing. Anyway, it's fixed now. There you go. I hope that helps, guys. I hope that helps. Right. <laughs> Let's finally get on to building the keyboard. Um, okay, cool. So, in terms of switches, you guys are going to get to pick from three different switches. We have some 1994 vintage black switches. We have some giant V4 frosty switches. Mythical, thank you so much for the So I appreciate that. Or we have some Duroc uh, Leandrin's Mechanisk branded switches as well. So those are the three that we have. And you guys are gonna get to pick which of these switches we use in the build. So let me set that going for you. You guys can vote in a second. Um, let me see if I can start a poll there for you. Okay, poll is now running, guys. You've got five minutes to decide which which ones you would like to see me use. Let me know which switches you'd like to see me use. Just to tell you a little bit about the switches, these have been are from 1994. They have been very, very lightly lubed. They're pretty much stock, very lightly lubed. They didn't come from a particularly nice keyboard. It was a bit grotty, but they have been ultrasonically cleaned, very lightly lubed, and they're in reasonable condition. They're not the best Vince I've ever had. Uh, they're certainly not the worst though. So those are the Vince switches. The giant V4 Frosties are completely stock. You can pick these. Uh, they are completely 100% stock. Uh, I haven't lubed them. I haven't done anything with them. I thought it'd just look nice with the POM keyboard. And the Mechanisk Linear Switches. These have been lubed very lightly again with 205 grade two. Um, and that's it. Other than that, they're just a nice linear switch. I've only used these ones before uh, and I can't remember what build that was in. If someone can remember what I built them in, it might have been. been my 10th, maybe. Matching switches and stabs would look so nice. Yeah, it's been nearly 40 minutes. I know, right? It's so easy to get talking about other bits and pieces. You see Vint Blacks on so many boards these days. Something different is always a delight to see. Yeah, I, I used to use Vint Blacks a lot. I haven't used them for a long time, actually. It's probably a year since I built with Vint Blacks, at least. Siantha says uh, matching switches and stabs would look so nice. Yeah, it does look good. It does look good when you do that. Uh, Matt says Milky Way PBTO 2 and PBTO 1 5 going up tomorrow. I don't see them on, on the Notion page. Yeah, it won't be today, it'll be up tomorrow. They won't get added to Notion until then. Some things do get added to Notion when I remember to put them on before they go live, but most things only get added to Notion as they go live and then updated after that. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so based on this, this, let me, let, while you guys are picking switches, let's show you the board. So, those are the three switches you can pick from. And let me know what you want to build it. Let me show you the board because this isn't like a stacked acrylic board with POM. This is like a proper full-on machine board. If you guys know Lynn works, Lynn do the uh, the the whale and a few of the boards as well. The Dollinger. This is the box that it comes in. Pretty nice, right? Pretty nice box. Now I'm not the first owner of this keyboard. I did buy this off on the aftermarket from a good friend of mine called I1A. Um, he may be watching. He may not be. But let's show you what we've got. We have. There's two plates in here. The first one is aluminium, and this is ANSI only. We're gonna be building ISO today, so we're not gonna be using this plate, but this is the stock plate that comes with the board. Right before I streamed, I made this plate myself. This is made from POM. I made this in my workshop on my laser cutter. This is an ISO fixed layout plate uh, with a fixed bottom row as well. Now I did have to do some slight hacks to get this together really super duper quickly, rather than making infusion, which would be what I would usually do. I did it all in the laser cutter software, which might not be the most accurate. So we'll see how that pans out when it comes to building. Um, 
I'm a bit dubious as to if I've done it right or not. We'll see. We'll see. Like, hopefully the, the alignment and everything works. But, yeah, so this is the POM ISO plate we'll be using. Uh, and the POM ISO plates will be coming back in stock on the store as well soon. I'll be making those to order very, very soon as well. Just waiting for the new laser scatter to arrive. Uh, as well as that, we're going to be using a Heine H87A PCB. Now, this is the one with the south-facing stabilizers. Uh, Balbin, thank you very much for the follow. So that's the PCB we're going to use today. And then in here, we have the keyboard. So this is made of POM. And as you can see, this is fully machined. It has got the whale logo design implemented there. It's fully machined POM. It's not a switches and stabilizers uh, available board, visible board, but there you go. The copper weight is going to be changed on this. So we're actually going to clear coat this and we're going to sandblast it and clear coat it. So we might do that on stream next week, actually, because I do want to do some more workshop streams. So we're going to sandblast and clear coat it or we're going to force patinate it because I've been force patinating some other bits and pieces recently. You should see the bottom of my Iron 165 now. It looks pretty good. My, my Iron 165 looks pretty, pretty good. But yeah, this is the pump whale. Look how nice that angle is. Look at that. So yeah, it's wing keyless, it's F12, it's TKL, it's going to be a solid board. Looks like a frozen block of milk. That's not a bad way of describing it. That's not a bad way of describing it. I might do some infill on this, depending on what keycaps that we put on it as well. We'll see, because there is a logo there, if you can see that in the light. I have no idea how much this costs retail. Uh, I know how much I paid for it on the uh, aftermarket, but I have no how much it cost. No idea how much it cost retail. Okay, so you guys picked the mechanistic linear switches. That's what we're going to use today. So I'll put the other switches to one side. Let you guys know. Let's take the board apart. Now this is a really simple construction board, guys. It's just two pieces. Uh, we need a hex key. It's too big. There we go. A stretch. Okay, okay. There we go. Nice big stretch. <laughs> Thank you, Playboy Chad. Uh, hit me with after market price. I think it was $800, I think. But it's about a year since I bought it. <laughs> Use jerk poms. Uh, yeah, I could do pom on pom on pom on pom, but. It's better to let chat choose, I think. One thing I haven't done is taken this apart before, so I'm not sure if uh, uh, this is actually uh, uh, threaded into the POM itself, in which case I need to be very careful with the screws, or if it has threaded inserts. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Then just use POM jelly keycaps. Well, I will have some POM jelly keycaps for sale next week. So, not to bang on about the store, but next Saturday we'll be selling both ink colored uh, POM jelly keycaps, which will have ISO and 7U compatibility, as well as selling all of the different colored POM jelly keycaps as well, uh, including the rainbow set and a few other bits and pieces too. So definitely watch out for those if you like POM keycaps. We've got a load of stuff to put in stock. Like I didn't realize just how much stuff we had lying around until I started to take note of it. Um, so it's time to get, get it all sold. So we've got space for more stuff coming in. Right, there we go. That should be all of the screws undone. Okay, we've got a couple that have just not quite come out so we're just going to be careful with those hey nick thanks very much for joining me thank you do you know when the icky 68s will ship to thrax if you check on the updates they're already on the way to me i don't have them as yet but i'm hoping to expect them later on this month and as soon as they arrive you guys will see on the insta updates and on the weekly updates as well 
So it's slightly different to the Sirius. This is actually a little bit smoother than the Sirius. It's slightly more polished. It's really difficult to show you guys with it being POM, but it's slightly more polished than the Sirius. The Sirius has had a slightly rougher texture to it. This is this feels like it's been very, very po much polished. So yeah, uh, the good news is it does have helicoils in the slots, so we're not screwing directly into POM. There is, it's really difficult to show you. There is like a metal insert in there, which basically, a, basically is glued in and acts as a thread. So that's good. It means we can screw into it without worry of damaging the board um, you can see there's a little recess here that's for the plate to sit in so that should be nice and easy if we check the plate we grab the plate file we can check that this all aligns nicely as well make sure it actually fits and it does there we go that all fits in place And then we'll just check it in the base as well. As I say, I made this super duper quickly on my laser cutter right before the stream started. <laughs> so if you saw my Insta stories, I was kind of rushing around to get it in place. There we go. That's all fitting nicely. Um, have we been able to check the compact kits match the original group by kit colors for the POM caps? I remember seeing some of them say they didn't match up. So they were made in different um, batches. So I can't guarantee that they will match if you buy the different colored ex expansion kits, but the ink ones do match. The ink ones do match. <laughs> so there we go. So that's all going to fit nicely. The pom plate is going to sit nicely in the board there, and that's going to look pretty damn nice. The plate doesn't screw in on this board. It just rests in place. Uh, so you could call it a sandwich mount, I guess, but it's going to look pretty good. I, th there's not really much to show you guys in terms of the machining on this board. It's, it's very, very simple. And normally I talk you through all of the different machining and anything I'd noticed, but it, it's just really simple. There's nothing on the internals. Uh, it's POM, so there's no fancy uh, markings or changes or anything like that. It just is a nice, simple board. It is what it is. Let's, uh, let's install the feet first. Nice to see a proper screwdriver rather than a wow stick for a change as well. I only use proper screwdrivers. I don't like wow sticks, so I have a full Weha set of different screwdrivers. Uh, in fact, I've got two of these, one for the workshop and one for in the office, because we do need them a lot of times. Do I still do the laser cutting streams and workshop streams? Yeah, not as much as I'd like to. Uh, the main reason for that is just time. I often don't have the time to do them, but yeah, there will be some more uh, laser cutting and workshop streams soon. Uh, the, the plan is actually to do a Lego build stream tomorrow. So for those of you who remember, I started to build the Lego Millennium Falcon uh, a few weeks ago, and we're gonna actually carry that on tomorrow night. So if you guys are interested in catching that, do come check us out. Uh, be on the same channel as this. Start around the same sort of time as well, I think, about 8 p.m. UK time. And we're going to see how far we can get through that. Uh, Mel and I actually did a J01 workshop stream a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago even, about a week ago now. You can check that out on uh, where we where we talked about Q QC and J01s and how that was all going. You can find that on YouTube under the J Prototypist channel. No, the 3D printers aren't running today. Um, it's, it's Sunday, so I don't always get up here with enough time to take off what was ever on them and set them going again. If you'd like, I can set them going now. Give me a second. Let me let me let me let me set these going. Uh, it'll take a minute to heat up, but I hope you've put in the right command. Okay, so that's that one started. Or it will be in a second. There we go. That's one started. Let's do the other one. Uh, uh, there it is. Couldn't find the file and that one's print. There we go. If you keep watching, guys, they will, I promise they'll start in a few minutes. It'll take five minutes or so for them to warm up, but they will be going in a few minutes' time. What kind of stuff do I tend to print? So I give away a lot of freebies with uh, basically with uh, with purchases. Um, oh, weird. 
They're in the, so this is interesting. These feet are in the slots, but that one, the slot is actually not milled straight. It's not milled square to the case. Interesting. Hmm. Oh well. Little things you notice. Um, in terms of sprinting stuff, uh, we tend to print 3D printed switch openers, 3D printed stem holders. Uh, Mel was printing some plant pot holders for herself the other day. I also print off things like um, uh, parts for toy cars, RC cars, parts for the real world cars as well. I do all sorts of printing for that. Um, 3D print tools that I need, adapters. Uh, when we get the new laser cutter in, you'll see that we'll start designing and printing in CAD a load of different parts for the new laser cutter to help with the autofocus and distancing and all sorts of stuff as well. So, yeah, we print an awful lot of stuff. Like the printers go probably, they're maybe only down for like 10 hours a week. Like the rest of the time they're running. And as I say, they'll start in a minute as well. At least you finished the Falcons landing gear. That's where the fun begins. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Uh, it's been a good build so far. I've really enjoyed it so far. But yeah. Right. Okay. So the feet are installed. We don't need that. The board is here. It's ready. Let's uh, now take a look at the PCB. So this is a Heine H87A. As well. Hey, nerdy man. Thank you very much for joining. Appreciate to see you here. I know I've got DMs from you. If I haven't got some yet, I apologize. I've got DMs from quite a lot of people but I'm trying to take weekends off from looking at DMs. This is just a standard H87A PCB from Heine. These will be in stock next week as well. Just another shill. If you want one of these, you better pick them up in stock. This is the south facing stabilizer version, but there'll be a north facing one as well, um, as well as 60% ones in stock too. But there we go. Supports ISO, supports ANSI, supports pretty much everything you could need it to. Um, that's it. Okay. Let's get some stabilizers ready. In fact, let's make sure that this is all going to actually work first because I did make this in a rush <laughs> right before I was due to go live in the stream. Uh, yeah, okay, this looks like it's going to work. Yeah, this looks like it's going to work okay. He says, famous last word. If it doesn't work, well, we'll just cancel the build early. So we're going to be going for a 7U bottom row. I'm pretty sure I've made the plate 7U, so let's check that actually. Yeah, so I've made the plate seven new bottom row. That's a seven new wire. Uh, so that's what we're going to do for this particular build. Okay. Now, in terms of the build itself, we do need a two U space. Well, we need the seven U space bar stabilizer. So let's get the stabilizers ready for that. We need a two U stabilizer for the backspace so we get all the parts ready for that we need a 2u stabilizer for the iso enter key and then finally we need one less 2u stabilizer and we're going to use that for the right shift there we go so let's start to put these together and we can move them up nicely yeah, we're going to go for the seven new bottom row. Nerdy, thank you so much for the two months of subs, man. I really appreciate that, my dude. Really appreciate that. I know you know I'm busy. Like, <laughs> during the week, it never ends. Like, I'm in the workshop for 16 hours a day most days, and it never ends. There's always more work to be done. But we will get through it. We will perceive. Uh, perceive? We will proceed... And we'll make it. We'll get there. Persevere. That's the word I was looking for. Not perceive. We'll persevere. Yeah, thank you very much for the subs, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the subs, bits, everything else that you guys dropped. Thank you so much, guys. I, the, the support is overwhelming sometimes. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Let's get to lubing these stabilizers. I'm going to start with the space bar. I'm just going to pop these straight into the PCB. Remember, guys, it's always easy to add more lube later on, so don't go too nuts with the lube. And you just want a nice amount on your wire just to make sure that we're going to remove any rattle and make it nice and smooth. Oops. I 
it's always easy to add more loop later on than it is to take it away. So just be careful with that. And then with the little bit of excess lube that we've got on the brush, we're just going to brush the slider rails. We're not trying to add too much lube here. We just want it to be nice and smooth. We're just going to lube the slider rails. Don't need very much at all here. And we're just going to put a small blob just in the back of each stabilizer where you can see the wire. And that's basically just going to be there to prevent rattle. go and that's our first stabilizer done time to move on to the next yeah overloop stabs can be really bad how often do i get stabs that tick uh it happens um usually it's because the wire is not quite straight so if i get that after i've built the board and it ticks um i usually just desolder it and rebuild it like it just goes straight into the rebuild queue um but yeah usually it's the wire like you could <laughs> If I had more time to prep for these streams, I would test all this beforehand, or I, you know, spend a lot more time tuning the stabilizers like Tehe does and everyone else. But I just don't tend to have the time uh, on stream because I am limited. Like it's a Sunday night here. This is the workshop. I still need to go home, finish off the weekend, spend some time with the wife, all of that kind of stuff. So I am very, very limited uh, in the amount of time that I can spend on builds. Uh, and the amount I can spend, spend streaming. So I don't really have time to do that on stream, but I usually just, if, if I get a ticking stab, which is maybe one in every 10 builds, it'll just go into the rebuild pile and it'll get rebuilt whenever I find a spare 10 minutes. Regimed a posture check, okay. Yes, lumber support is in place. I'm good, thank you. The only limiting factor we all have is time. That's more true than you know. The older you get, the less time you have as well and i don't just mean like in life i mean just like in general the older i get the less time i find i have for everything that's way too much i did grab an iso keychron okay nice good board uh, which i'm looking forward to doing comparisons between it and the gmmk pro as a budget 75%. Yeah, it's it's I haven't experienced the Keychron personally, but I have experienced the um uh the Gym MK Pro and it is good. Thank you guys. That was enough for three hydrates, I'm sure. <coughs> okay. I'm going to have to go to the loose shortly now I've done that. <laughs> That's the other thing as you get older. Waking up in the night to go to the toilet becomes a regular occurrence. Wait, that's way too much lube. Stop taking so much lube. Jake, what are you doing? Come on. The other thing as well is when uh, when I was talking about looping stabs earlier on, if it's for a customer build, I'll take much more care of the stabs than I do for my own personal builds. But that's just a personal thing. ISO is just cultured. Yeah, ISO is good. Like I prefer it personally, but I can see why people don't like it. Like it's not perfect, but I don't think any layout is perfect. Not yet, anyway. Maybe we'll get there one day. For sure, preference is a big thing in this hobby, and it's the reason why a lot of us are here. It's a shame that ISO stuff is so uncommon. I mean, it's not that uncommon. People say it's really hard to get hold of. It's not. Like I have a load of ISO stuff, so it's not that hard to get hold of. But I appreciate that it isn't as easy to find as ANSI stuff is. I, I do get that. 
Um, I think the issue is that a lot of the times to get ISO stuff, you have to pay a little bit more for it than you'd like to, because you have to uh, you have to buy an international kit, which is another fifty or sixty pounds or uh, seventy euros or something like that, or you have to buy just an ISO UK kit when you use ISO DE, and I get that it's not as easy, but. The perfect layout is the one you have the least issues with. I don't think that's a fair definition because, well, you shouldn't have any issues with layout, right? If it's perfect, it shouldn't have any issues. And that's what we're all striving for with our keyboards. What we feel is perfection. And that's gonna be an individual basis for everyone. Mr. 15 new space bar. <laughs> I have a few 10 new spacebar builds, but I don't think I have any 15 new spacebar builds. Okay, there we go, all lubed up. <laughs> right, let's get these in the board. And this is where we find out that I did cut the, uh, the plate entirely incorrectly and nothing fits and we end up moving back to the ANSI layout with the plate that came with the board because like I did literally create this plate within like I don't know it took me about two minutes to create the plate from three different plate files um, for the layouts that I had so I am a little bit nervous that it won't work because I didn't have much time to check it I, I yeah I knew if I didn't get it done really quickly I wouldn't have time to cut it so I just did my best at a pace so this is the real test does the plate actually fit over the stabilizers oh okay okay that's looking pretty good okay we might be good we might be good that looks like i might have done it okay let's see let's see how the rest of the bill goes let's get these screwed in first is anything actually perfect um yeah uh, there are some things that are perfect. My wife is one of those things that's perfect. So some things are perfect. Any percent plate cutting with speed run? Dude, like, it, it was nuts. Like, I had like four different plate files, three or four different plate files, and I had to go through them to work out which one was the right plate file. Turned out none of them were. So then I had to like cut bits of some parts of plate file. And normally I'd just take it into Fusion, I'd spend 20 minutes on it in Fusion, and it'd be good, it'd be fine. Um, but I didn't have that luxury today. So I just kind of rushed it and did it as fast as I could and I did it in the uh, the software that the laser cutter uses which is not the best for that kind of thing like it'll do it but it's not the best for it so remember when you're screwing, screwing stabilizers in guys you don't want to over tighten them just go until you feel tightness and then do a quarter turn more any tighter than that and you risk damaging the PCB so just be really gentle with them just a finger tight and then a quarter turn more Trolling Cootie says that desk mat looks like it would match a white black gel one with a brass pen rail real well. Yeah, I think it would. I think you're absolutely right. And the good news is that you'll be able to buy these in stock on the store next week. So watch out for that. Might be coming out with a 15 new TKL soon. Nice. I'd like to see it. I have a couple of uh, 10 new boards, as I've mentioned before, but never a 15 one. Any update on the new J1 gaskets? Uh, Semi Doge, all of the updates are posted onto Notion as soon as I get them. Uh, all I know is that the gaskets are now on the way to me. As soon as they arrive, then the J1s will ship. It's as simple as that. They have not arrived as yet. 
if they had arrived i wouldn't be here streaming today i'd be packing jail ones and shipping them Uh, have I seen the Gion Works W1AT board? I've seen a lot of what, what Gion's working on. I don't know which one the W1AT is, um, but I have seen a lot of his boards, so I've probably seen it. If you remind me of the layout, I'll probably know which one it is. Was it suddenly quite hot where you are today? Suddenly it was like more than 20 degrees Celsius over here. Yeah, it's 24 degrees Celsius here today, which is way hotter than it was supposed to be. Like, I think the, the forecast said it was going to be like 18, 19 degrees Celsius. And it was about 24 degrees. So, yeah, it was way hotter than I expected it to be. Uh, I've never built, built a keyboard before. Do you think the EQ would be a good, easy build to start with? Yeah, I think it'll be perfectly fine to build. I think any keyboard that I've seen today is going to be relative, or up to today, is going to be relatively easy to build. Even the more difficult ones aren't really that difficult when you get under the skin of them. Uh, and they all follow pretty much the same basic thing. Uh, Thrax, thank you so much for the sub, man. Thank you, man. I really, really appreciate that. I appreciate that more than I can tell you. Thank you, man. This is nice. Nice. Any more chance of BB hinting? Uh, no. If someone guesses it, I, I will tell you. Um, currently waiting on the prototype of it, and that's it. How much did the Jail one go for? It depends on the options you picked and a few of the bits and pieces. Uh, but I think it was in the region of just under £400 pounds, uh, during the group buy. It's slightly more expensive uh, as extras. Although I haven't decided how we're going to do the extras yet. I need to work that out. Oh yeah, the, the 3D printers are going now as well, guys. Look. I told you they'd start. Yeah, thank you very much, Dax. I appreciate it. It's going to hit 28 degrees later on this week in the UK. Oh, please, no. I'm not, I'm not good with the heat. I'm not good with the heat. Okay. Time to put some switches in the build. It's a 6 depends percent with a numpad on the right and 10 macro keys on the left. Oh, yes, I have seen that one. Yeah. Yes, I have seen that. I am not oblivious to that particular board. Okay, so the switch is clipped nicely into the plate. That's good. I didn't get a chance to test that earlier on. I should have done. As I say, the, the plate isn't cut the neatest either because it was a quick speed run of plate cutting. But hey, it's all working now. <clears throat> Do the 3D printed switch stuff come with switches you're selling in group buy? Uh, also, any other idea on dates with them other than just Q4 2021? No, if I had any other idea of the date, it would tell you on the Notion page. If I had any other idea of the date, it would tell you there. Um, all I know is going to be towards the back end of this year. That's literally all I know. Um, I don't have anything else to give you. If I did, that's where it would be. The, the second I know it, I update the Notion page so I don't forget. So as soon as I see the email or the Discord conversation or the message or whatever it is that says, you can expect these around this date, then it goes on Notion. So as, whatever's on Notion is the latest information I have for everything, for all group buys. Uh, in terms of 3D printed stuff, uh, I don't usually send them out with group buy ones, but if you drop me an email, I can add it onto a note and I can send that for you as well. That's not a problem. Uh, Threx, what does this founder's badge mean? Which founder's badge? I don't know which founder's badge you mean. Oh, it was only your first 10 subscribers. Yeah, you were one of the first 10 people to subscribe. I see what you mean. Yeah, sorry. Through hole kits are going to be the hardest to build. Yeah, they probably are the hardest to build. But again, I don't think they're difficult. They're just time consuming. I think anything is relatively easy. I mean, there's one thing. If you start off with a uh, with a through hole kit and you solder that and it all works, then at the end of it, you, you're not going to need to worry about soldering any of the keyboard, right? Because you've done it. Uh, Connor Graphic, thank you very much. Jiru, thank you very much for the follow as well. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Speaking of 3D printers, I just successfully printed a case for a little through hole macro pad I made recently. Both are firsts. Nice, congratulations. 3D printing is so fun. I love 3D printing. I can't wait to see where the technology goes in the next five years. I think it's going to be amazing. I, I still need to print to build up my three uh, my conveyor belt 3D printer. I still need to get on that. That should be something I try and do soon. 
26, 28, 27 for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then drop to 23 to 18 for the rest of the week as it currently stands. Great. The days when I'm busiest in the workshop, it's going to be the hottest. Love it. It's been a tough day, but this is helping. I'm glad it's helping, Wayward Fox. I'm glad it's helping. One day, if you ever get a chance to come and visit the the, uh, the workshop, we'll sit down, we'll have a coffee together, we'll have a chat about keyboards, and we'll make everything right in the world. Uh, you really enjoy the hot weather. It makes everyone, everyone, everything a lot cheerier. <sighs> up to a certain point. Here in Britain, we just like to moan about the hot weather. So up to a certain point, it does. Like 23, everyone's really happy. And then 28, and everyone's really sad and depressed because it's too hot. Luckily, I have AC at home, so I'm not too uncomfortable when it's like this. Uh, hey, Mike. Thanks very much for being here. It says, Jay, uh, which is the best RGB keyboard under $150? Man, I can't answer that for you. Like... <laughs> I can't answer that. There, there are so many different keyboards out there. I, I don't really like RGB builds personally. Um, I I couldn't answer that. I'd probably guess one of the Ducky boards, maybe an Ampro. Depends on what size and layout you want. Like there's there's more than one answer to that question, I think. And and best is always a bit of a misnomer, bit of a misnomer in this hobby, because different people like different things. So what I like isn't necessarily going to be what you like. Um, this is a really hard one to answer, I'm afraid. Asking the Discord server, have a conversation with other people about it, get some suggestions, recommendations there, and that'll put you in a much better position to make a decision. That's the fairest thing I can tell you. If I, I mean, I could just say go and buy this, but then you might not enjoy that, and you might be upset with me then. So I'm not going to say that, but yeah. Wait until the Icky Aurora 68s go live and buy one of those. That would be the business correct answer for me to give you. But the real answer is, I think it's probably one for a more of a group discussion than just me. You can join the Discord below, ask in there. They'll help you out. <clears throat> uh, a through hole kit was my first keyboard. They're pretty damn easy. Yeah, right. Good. That sounds pretty solid. If you can do that, if you can do, if you can three, if you can solder a through hole keyboard, you can solder any keyboard. What is the additional price margin increase for group, group by keyboard extras or is it dependent? It's different for everything. It's usually between 15 and 25%, usually closer to the 15% than the 25%, but it really depends on how much profit or loss the rest of the group by made. If we if we manage to make a reasonable profit, then it's lower. If we have made a loss and we have to recoup some money, it might be a little bit higher. It really depends. I, I can't give you a straight answer to that. I want to practice soldering first before I go for through hole boards. That's fair. Completely fair. I want to get a 3D printer, but I feel like I would use it a lot and then just not use it. Well, then you can give it away to a friend or a relative who might be interested in it. There's always things you can do. Iron brew? Iron brew, yeah. Love me some iron brew. Can't wait to be stuck in a classroom in all heat again. I am. I. Do you know what? In life, I am so glad that I no longer have to go and sit in classrooms ever. I was not the best student. I was not the most intelligent person in school. I struggled with socialising. I struggled with teachers. Um, I seem to do relatively well in exams, but yeah, I don't miss school. Let's put it that way. I don't speak to anyone I went to school with. Mind you, it is, it is 20 years since I went to high school. So, um, quite literally 20 years this year since I finished high school. But, yeah. I would doubt anyone I went to school with would, would even remember me. Sounds like a dream, sir. Well, whatever your game, I'm game. Coffee machine's waiting. Uh, hot weather is miserable. Can't regulate my temperature, so I get fevers. Yeah, my body copes quite well. I just get upset with them if I have to do anything in the heat. Like I don't like walking in the heat or driving in the heat or anything else. If it's too hot, even walking the dog can be a pain. But I will never not walk the dog because she needs the exercise. 
But we tend to go out when it's cooler in the evening so the, the tarmac doesn't burn her paws. <clears throat> what are the switches, Tyson? The switches that we're doing using today are the Mechanisk Ultramarine switches. These were chosen by chat from a choice of three. I would like to pick up a, through, a few a through hole kits from 42 Cubes sometime. Yeah, they're a good product. Like, they do loads of good through hole kits. I, I like a lot of them. Never knew a group I could make a loss. Yeah, I mean, it happens. You know, if things like cost more to produce or things get lost in shipping. Like, I don't mind sharing with the JL ones. Uh, something like 50 PCBs got lost in shipping from the manufacturer to me. Don't know where they are. Didn't get them. The manufacturer says they sent them. It's what it is, but then like the minimum order quantity is 100 PCBs. So that's another three grand just in PCBs to buy. Um, it, yeah, it's difficult. But it can be, you know, like the J1 gaskets as well. They went missing in shipping. So we moved to an injection molded model. That's costing roughly 15 to $20 per keyboard to have those made. Sell 500 keyboards. And then, you know, work out the cost of the gaskets from that. It's uh, it, it can happen, but the main aim is that the customer gets the product they paid for at the end. Okay, need to remember that this board is wing keyless, so we just need to skip a couple of switches on this bottom row. But we're almost there. Interested in getting a 3D printer, something around the 300 pound keyboard price range. Uh, I mean, I started out with the Ender 3 Pro and it was okay. I've moved over to Prusses and they're amazing. Like the, the difference is night and day. It's like driving a, a 1991 Deu Matiz versus driving a Ferrari F40. Like the difference is night and day. Uh, <laughs> I would I would genuinely recommend spending a little bit more on a, on a 3D printer and buying it that way. Yep, make will sell some great kits, yep. The Ultimakers are really good machines. They're really good. They're probably better than what I have. Okay, so that's all of the switches put into the plate. Looks like I got the plate spot on for the laser cutting, which I'm pretty happy with. There we go, you see? It's all gonna fit together just nicely. I'm really happy with that. Like, like I put the plate together so fast. I, didn't, I, I was almost sure it was gonna fail. There we go. Redeem stretch. All right, Nick, you get it. <sighs> there we go. You know that the 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 mechanism ultramarine. It's just the lighting. Match the stabilizers. There we go. Okay, now it's time to solder, and that does mean, guys, that you can ask me any question you'd like. While ever we're soldering on this channel, you can ask me a keyboard question. You can ask me a question about cars, about life money the universe you can ask me a question about anything at all uh nothing is too big or too small to answer a question about so ask away i'm just going to put this down to solder on mal keeps complaining when she comes into the office that i get solder splatted on the desk mats so we're going to solder on a piece of cardboard today there we go mal if you're watching just for you <clears throat> Am I likely to miss out on the Candy Bar Premium 3 group buy for waiting until the 24th to purchase? Uh, whatever the close, no, it closes on the 27th, I think. I think it closes on the 27th, fuzziest. What is the best keyboard material and why is it POM? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there is a best. But anyway, yeah, ask me questions, guys. All you need to do is tag me with at jprototypist so I can see it nice and clearly. I will ask, answer any question you ask, as long as it's Twitch safe and it's not going to get me banned. I will answer any question you can think to ask about any topic whatsoever. You can ask me anything from next week's lottery numbers to what I think about, you know, uh, Fermat's last theorem. I don't know why I came up with that. To the Fibonacci sequence, to... Um, the Kessel Run, anything at all. You 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 think of it's cars, keyboards, life, the universe. You think of any question whatsoever, uh, and I will answer it to the best of my ability uh, in a Twitch safe way. All you need to do is just tag me with that J prototypist, ask the question, I will answer it. Nothing is off limits as long as it's Twitch safe.
Okay. George Mercedes? Uh, I think so. I think it would be... I, I think George Mercedes, and then I think Bottas to uh, Alpha. I think that's the move. I don't know who's going to get George's seat at um, uh, Williams, but I think it might be Albon. Yeah, if I was a betting man, that's where I'd bet on. I'd bet on Albon to Williams, Russell to uh, to Mercedes, and um, uh, Bottas to Alfa Romeo. That's what I would guess. Just based on what I've heard. How is the Tesla? It's too good, man. Like... I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is, but like because I've seen all the problems that some people have had with them. But genuinely, I've been blown away with the car. Like it is, it's pretty much close to perfect. Like I hate to say this because it, I regret saying anything is perfect, but I have zero issues with the car. In fact, the, the, the one slight issue I have is when you're changing from drive to reverse, it takes about a second to change. And that frustrates me because it's a little bit longer than it would take me to do the gear change. That's literally the only issue I have with the car. And like that's that's neither here nor there. Um, but to drive, it's just lovely. It's got a lot of power. Uh, it's faster than pretty much anything else out there. And you can always get a good start from the line. You can't oversteer or understeer, it seems. In, in two and a half weeks of driving it, three weeks of driving it, I haven't managed to oversteer or understeer the car once. It just doesn't, no matter what I do with it, it just sticks. Um, I haven't gone nuts yet, but... Like, I feel like I need to take it on a track day just to see. Just to see if I can make it break traction at some point. I mean, it will do eventually, but it's like, where? Because I haven't found that limit yet. Um, Would you consider selling some switch lubing stations? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I, I make, I design and make my own switch lubing stations. Uh, you should be able to find the listing on prototypist.net. Uh, there is none in stock at the minute, but there will be some more coming soon. Um, I'm just waiting for my new laser cutter to come and then I'll be making lube stations in stock again. Uh, we've made them in all sorts of colors and different sizes and stuff. And they always seem to sell really well. I just need to get the new laser in so I can make more. Simples. Uh, next question comes from the be uh, favorite plate and switch combo. Uh, carbon fiber and black inks is probably my favorite combo, but it really depends on the keyboard. Like that doesn't work in every keyboard. So that would be my favorite combo with the caveat that it depends on the keyboard that I'm using. Uh, what's the 442nd digit of pi? Three. Three is the 442nd digit of pi. Um, <laughs> when am I going to get a second Tesla? I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make the wife get one. Uh, so her car's just nearly three years old. We'll probably trade it in in about two years' time. I think we'll probably get the wife one at that point. So yeah, then. Uh, do you think that the Isla will make it to group by this month? Don't know. I need to sit down with Tom and work it out. We're still waiting for the final prototype round. There was ten or so boards in that round. Uh, we're still waiting on PCBs from Heine for those. Once we get those and then we can ship those out, we'll make a final decision on when that's going to happen. But yeah, it's on hold until that gets sorted. Um, is the current position. After that, it will be between Tom and I to just sort out what that looks like. Uh, the right PC, uh, IMTN, Mtopi, uh, user 00012725, uh, Della Class, thank you so much for the follows, guys. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> would you say to a newbie who's entered into the key hobby, what should I be looking for? Where should I start? So read everything, uh, Akshade Ev. Akshade Ev? Uh, read everything you can get involved in a community work out your budget and then work out what your options are and then help use help with the community talking to people to whittle down those options to where you want to be uh, setting the budget is key because you can buy things from $150 to $10,000 in this hobby there, there is no ceiling on what you can spend so having a budget and knowing what that is that's all going to make things a lot easier from the start point so that would be my key to you and that's where I would recommend you start 
Uh, gonna watch Shang-Chi? Yes, I will. I will be watching that. Too disappointed with Spy last week. Yeah, it was a weird one. Um, hopefully it'll be better going forwards. Uh, what did the people who were trying to ruin your holiday want? Updates? Yeah, so when the people tried to ruin my holiday, they reached out to my wife because they wanted me to fix things on an order. Uh, Space Cables, thank you so much for the sub, man. Happy Sunday to you too. Um, yeah, so what happened was I was on holiday. Uh, I told everyone I was going on holiday. I put an announcement on the website I was on holiday. I put it on my... I put an out of office on the prototypist keyboard's email address saying I was on holiday. Um, I put an a auto reply on my phone text messages saying I was on holiday. Facebook Messenger, everywhere customers could get hold of me said I was on holiday. Uh, including on the Discord server. Um, someone tried to PM me on the Discord server, couldn't get through to me because I didn't reply because I wasn't replying to them while I was away, and I made that clear. Um, then they found Prototypus Keyboards on Facebook. From there, they found my personal fa Facebook profile. From there, they found my wife's Facebook profile, and they messaged her on uh, Messenger uh, and asked her for updates, and they also tried to call her through Messenger to ask for updates as well. And it's like... Yeah, like nothing was shipping, so it wasn't like it was even urgent. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. I get that people want their stuff and they want to make sure that things are right. But like when I told them once that I was on holiday, I replied to them and I got back. I was a little bit disappointed that they carried on and even went down to phoning my wife to try and get an update on it. Like that's just not on. Like my wife has no idea. She's not involved in the company. She doesn't work for me. She doesn't come do packaging even. She has no, no idea. So... <clears throat> okay, let's go back up and catch uh, the questions here. Uh, can you describe how the store checkout process works for US folks, payment tax options? Uh, so the price you see on the store is without UK VAT. That's the, the, the price without UK VAT. Uh, the shipping options you see on the store will be the shipping options available to you. You'll pay the price. You'll pay the VAT. There'll be no sales taxes involved from the UK. There'll be no US sales taxes involved. And if you have to pay import fees in the US, then you'll have to pay import fees in the US. The only difference is for EU customers who will have the option to pay the import fees at checkout. And they'll have a more expensive shipping option for that as well. Um, UK customers will see VAT automatically included in the price, but everywhere else will see the price cheaper by 20% uh, because it doesn't include the sales tax for those people. I hope that helps. That was a whistle stop tour, but that should answer most questions. <clears throat> um, what do you, what sold did you recommend? And do you think lead free is fine or is it worth it to find leaded? I always use leaded. I use um, uh, a particular brand called Kester. This is 6040 leaded solder. Um, but any solder should be theoretically fine these days. Like I've used B&Q solder before, which is you know, like plumber solder before for keyboards. It works just fine. Um, you just have to take it a little bit steadier. It's more for desoldering that I prefer leaded than uh, than unleaded solder. But yeah, just take your time. It'll be fine. That's a good. That's a good mnemonic. I like that. Take your time and it'll be fine. But any any solder should should work. The key is to get it about a millimeter or 0.7 millimeters thick. Any thicker and it, it it's hard to get it to work on switches because it's too thick. Any thinner and it just takes a lot of solder to actually get your switches soldered. So yeah, 0.7 to one millimeter thick is probably the sweet spot, I guess. At least for me. Your mileage may vary. You might want to try something different. Turn on slip start in the settings. Yeah, I've tried that turned on. Uh, it doesn't really do much. Like, like it just felt the same on tarmac. The performance model can do don't you? Yeah, I don't have the performance model. Jay skipping over my little Z comment. I didn't see it. Let me see if I can find it. Max ping little Z. Stainless steel plate. Best is stainless steel with stainless steel plate. Max ping little Z. I'm not sure I follow it. Okay. Um. What was the fastest you've ever had something sell out, and what was it? Uh, JO1s. We were supposed to sell 200 of them. We ended up selling closer to 400 of them uh, in less than 37 seconds. Um, the 200 actually sold out in something like 15 seconds or something. That was probably the fastest we've had sell out. Um, yeah, probably that. Bleached extras went really quickly as well. I think they were about... They were less than a minute. There's been loads of things that have been less than a minute, but I think the JO one was probably the fastest in Group Buy. <clears throat> when am I buying you a Tesla? I'm not. 
Um, thick bezels or thin bezels on a keyboard? Both. I don't mind. I like both thick bezels and thin bezels. It really depends on the design of the board. Um, I have a lot of thick bezel boards though, I guess, so probably I'd go for a thick bezeled keyboard. But again, all personal preference. I'd like actually a really chunky thick bezeled TKL. That's something I do want to do at some point. <clears throat> Jay, you skipped my question. Dot Nick, I didn't see it. Did you tag me? Uh, do you think parallel universes exist? Okay. So, yes, I do. I do think parallel universes exist, but probably not in a way that we would ever be able to visit them or see them or interact with them. Um, I am a believer of the split worlds possibility, where if there's more than one possible outcome to a situation, then the, the universe will digress and create two options with both outcomes available. Um, but I don't think that they're actually visitable or inhabitable or that you can move to them and i think it will all happen at a an atomic level it's not like happening at like a do i want to go to the shops today or not kind of level it's more an atomic level what things happen um so yeah i think it does i think multiple universes probably do exist i don't think there'll be any passage of information between them um i think the easier thing to visualize is probably uh, more spatial dimensions than we're aware of that we can perceive i think that's something that we'll probably find proof and evidence of in the very near future which will be the first step to pr proving multiple universes <clears throat> can i get a snack in my j1 that i can't get in the states if you email me your order number and ask for something specific, yes, but only for the first three people to ask. There, I'll do it. When will you make an orange board? Uh, there's some orange boards coming that we're going to make, yeah. Uh, so the orange that you might have seen on the lodestone board, there's going to be some boards made in that colour. Uh, in fact, I have the colour here. There's going to be some boards made in this orange colour here. There you go. Let's try it near the camera, just for the different light. There you go. There's going to be some boards made in that colour soon. Uh, that's just harassment. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, I can see Space has had a similar story. I can call you on a Sunday about a GMK group. But yeah, like people think that because we run online stores, we're working 24-7. Like, I've had people complain that they've messaged me at what was 11 p.m. my time in the UK and then again at 5 a.m. my time in the UK and being upset that I didn't respond. It's like, dude, I have to sleep. But yeah, I think it's just like a... It's no one's fault. It's just it's just one of those things. It's just how people are. People want to do things quickly and they don't want to hang around. I get it. Thoughts on Weathers Original? Uh, great when you're around old people. Yeah. I'm glad you cancelled their orders and banned them. Deserve for that level of self-importance. Yeah, so it wasn't the fact that they've tried to reach out to me. It was the fact that they reached out to my wife. And I told them on the phone when I did speak to them uh, that I wasn't, I didn't care what their order was or anything else. I was just going to cancel it because I wasn't going to accept being put on the spot. Um, they got even more obtuse at that time, telling me that, well, basic, basically they started shutting down the phone saying I needed to update their orders right now. And I was literally on my way to get a massage. I was literally walking in a robe away from my hotel room to go get a massage. And it was like, no, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm not doing anything for the next couple of days. If you need me to support you urgently, you can have to wait until I respond to your email. They couldn't accept that. So I just said, look, that's it. Your order's getting cancelled. It's going to be refunded. I'm really sorry, but I don't want to deal with you as a customer if you're not going to respect that I have some private time in my life and that I'm currently not working. I'm technically on holiday. Um, and you can't wait just two days until I can get home and respond. So I hung up the phone at that point. I blocked the number. I cancelled the order. Um, I emailed them and told them and said if they wanted to discuss it via email, they could. Never heard a reply since. I was expecting a Reddit thread where they, like, lambasted me, but that didn't happen, so. <clears throat> uh, what happened, Flipping? Uh, Wave of Fox says, Jay, did you look up the, the 442nd digit of pi? It is actually three, if you count the three. Um, I didn't. I guessed. Um, or maybe I just know all of the digits of pi forever. Like the one after that is a seven, it goes three, seven. So 442nd digit is three, the 443rd is a seven. If I'm right, guys, it's going to look a bit weird. I really don't know the digit of pi, but don't tell her. 
don't tell her. <laughs> uh, Golden Ratio says, picking up my Tesla at Model 3 in a couple of weeks. Any tips of advice to what to do and look out for? Check panel gaps, check for stone chips, um, check you get your mud flaps. Check you get your mud flaps. Um, make sure you understand how the car works before you set off. Make sure you ask any questions that are really helpful. Uh, do 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 a check for the tire pressures and everything else within the car. Don't start driving until you've set the seat up. Uh, check that all of the automated functions work. Connect your app. Test it out. Test the lights. Test the horn. Test summon. Test absolutely everything you can while you're there. Usually they give you a good 15, 20 minutes, half an hour to do all of that, and they're really, really accommodating with it. So test absolutely everything. But check all the panel gaps. Check for stone chips all across the paintwork. Use a flashlight on the paintwork if you need to. Point any out to them usually what they'll say is take a photograph of it uh, email them right there and then explain in the email that you're at the, 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 the place picking up your car and then they'll send a rep out to fix it uh, I had one stone chip on mine uh, I did that and they're gonna come and fix it next week dead simple right okay my, my soldering iron had cooled down because we've been talking for so long there okay Right, okay. Uh, what 3D printer am I using? I have two uh, Prusa uh, Mark 3Ss. Uh, I also have uh, another 3D printer that's not built up yet, which is a Creality uh, 3D print mill. So it prints onto, onto a conveyor belt. And I also have an Ender 3 Pro, which is with a friend right now. I lent it to him to test out 3D printing and give it a try. So I have four 3D printers in total, only two of which are currently working, which are the two in the screenshots that you can see live running below. Oh, redeem posture check. Okay, yeah, posture's good. Let's have a stretch. Dangerous to the soldering iron. There we go. And hydrate as well. Well, I'm not drinking water, but I'll drink this. <clears throat> Donick, uh, I hope you know that even though I message you at all times of the day, it's because I know you'll get to it whenever you have the time. Not that one hands around. I know, dude. Like, most people get that. 90% of people are fine. And most people, when you explain to them that it was, ex that, like, it was just um, time zones and stuff, they're good with it. But some people do get a little bit obtuse with it sometimes. Like, you should reply to me within 10 minutes. It's like, well, not when I'm asleep, I won't. All you need to do is message them once when you know their time zone's asleep and say, I need a response to this within the next 30 minutes. And then they get it instantly. Like, they get it. They get it. But I know you know I'll reply to you. Like, I know sometimes it can take me a couple of days to get back to people or even a week. But if you've messaged me on Discord and I haven't responded... I leave it unread until I can respond, and I know that sometimes takes some time, but I will get to it eventually. Okay, last few switches here. Let's answer the last couple of questions. I see people stressing out in vendor discords on a Sunday, like, I ordered this on Saturday, it's been 24 hours. I think Amazon's ready. I think you're right. I think the whole Amazon culture, I want things immediately, is, is one thing. Um, but like people need a break right people need their weekends they need their time off like i've been abundantly clear in my weekly update uh, that i'm not working tomorrow i have to take it off for personal reasons i'm not going to be in work tomorrow i'm not going to be replying to emails i'm not going to be replying to discord messages tomorrow because i'm not going to be around and um, i know some people will be upset with that and i know i'll lose some customers because of the awesome sales and i know that i'll lose some people offering me products to sell or designers but it's it's just what it is i can't be available 24 7 sadly um, I need some personal time sometimes. And sometimes it's a case of prioritizing work as well. Like I have that much to do that I can't just always do what people want me to do when they want me to do it. <clears throat> Firing customers is always an option. Yeah. Hopefully the massage will leave those frustrations a bit. If it helps, Trinsen, I fell asleep. The poor girl was massaging me and she was doing such a good job that I fell asleep. So yeah, it was fine. Nah, it's a one. All right, okay. Take another shot of a green one. Uh, I think the 443rd digit is a one. So the 442nd is a three. The 443rd digit is a one. There you go. Right. Okay, so we've sold the board. You guys have got a couple of questions. So let's answer these and catch up. Um... Can you legally use the autopilot in the UK? Yeah, so it's just basically just sat nav. As long as I'm holding onto the steering wheel and giving it a little nudge every 30 seconds or so when the system tells me, then yeah, um, uh, it's then it's okay. It's fine. Um, it's just basically advanced cruise control, right? That's all it is. 
So yeah. No company I know of replies in 10 minutes. I don't reply in 10 minutes usually. <clears throat> Here's the car check stuff. Nice. Good good, uh, good clip. Good clip. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize most key businesses are one guy in a shared warehouse. Yeah, so there's me. Uh, there's James who does a lot of the design work, but he doesn't really work for product service. He's just freelance. Um, there's my accountant, which he's just an accountant, so he doesn't count. And then Mel comes in and helps me pack. And also my mother-in-law, Sharon. Praise be to Sharon because she does a lot of the book work, the, like the accounts. Like that's a full-time job in itself, just in the accounts and stuff. She does a lot of the stuff that I don't have time to do. Um, so yeah, like that's a thing as well. But yeah, technically it's a one-man show. Um, but Mel does come in and help, and Sharon does help as well. They're not technically on the payroll; they're both freelance again. But you know, it works for us. I'm gonna get some sleep. It's past two a.m. here. It was fun watching the stream. Thanks. Get some good sleep. Get some good sleep. What is the chemical symbol for POM? I don't think it has one because uh, it's like an alloy, right? It's, um, well, it's polyoscillate metabolism or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's often called acetyl or delrin for product names. So, yeah, I don't know what the chemical symbol is. Though. Right. Okay. So we're all soldered together. It's now time to test this and see if it works. That means I need to find a cable, which I have just here. Because this isn't a standard... Uh, Wait, I can't see. I can't see my uh, top of my PC. It's dark under my desk. There is a USB port here. There it is. There we go. Right. Let's test this and make sure everything's working. So let's load up via. <clears throat> and let's get that on the screen. Okay, so you guys should be able to see via on the screen now. Let's plug it in the board and it should pop up in there. We have lights on the bottom, which is good. Yep, they're all working. These ones are working, I promise you. There we go. Okay. H10. That's that board. That's the new board. Right, let me just unplug the old board, just make sure. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah, so this is the board we're working on. Right, so we just need to tweak the layout for this one first. So we're just gonna click on layouts. And then we're gonna say that we've got ISO on, because we do. We've got full backspace, so we don't need to split that. But we've got split left shift, so we need to turn that on as well. And then we've got the seven U bottom row. Uh, so we're gonna turn that on too, seven, key wing, seven U wing keyless. So now we have everything here. Uh, everything should work just fine. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to have any layers on this to start off with. So we're just going to jump into the key Mac and we're just going to make this uh, left alt. Uh, oh, sorry, right alt. No, right. Oh, we're going to make this windows. Where is it? Right win. There we go. There we go. That's what we're going to make here. Um, everything else we're going to leave the same for now. I will probably will put some of the F keys on layers later on, but that's all we need to do. And we're going to jump into the key tester and we're going to test the matrix. And this should now show us whether everything was working or not. If you guys haven't used Via, it's like a godsend. Like if you go back to the days of TMK, man, that was a, a boot mapper, O2D, man, some of those bits of software were so confusing to use. Uh, although I do like how boot mapper interacts with uh, with macros, that's really good functionality. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, all working so far, split left shift works. All working there. Okay, looks like we're all good. Everything works. We now know that the PCB is in good condition. We can get rid of Via. We can unplug it. Your 05 hydrates. You're gonna make me go to the loo. What does the test matrix option do? So the test matrix option uh, changes what the keyboard's outputting. So it's not actually testing that the keys you're pressing are doing what they're supposed to do. What it's doing is it's testing that the controller on the back knows where every key is and that that key is working. So it's checking the routing of every single key. So in the background, the bit that you can't see, there's a load of coding that tells the MCU where every key is and what's in each column and in each row. 
So all of that coding is put into the back end of Fire. And what that test matrix does is it works out what layout you've got and it tells you if those keys are responding in the areas that they're supposed to do. Um, if it doesn't work there, it's not because you... And it's better to test it there than it is to test in the key map because if you test it in the key map, it might be just that you've not assigned the right thing to it. So this key might not have worked because it needed two keys to press to be able to show up because you need to press the momentary layer and then another function on that new layer. But if you test it in the matrix, it tells you whether the matrix is hearing anything, whether there's a key code behind it or not. So that's what you do with that form. Okay. So that was nice and simple. Now it's time to put the, the build into the board, the build into the board, and then we can pick some keycaps. I'm just going to drop that in. That all fits together nicely. I'm going to pop the top case on top. I'm going to flip this over. We're going to put one screw in in the corner first and then we're going to make sure everything's aligned then we're going to go diametrically opposed into the other corner and just make sure everything is still aligned and as long as it is we'll be good to screw the case together so i'm just putting these down to finger tight at the minute not going too tight making sure that there's no gaps that the screws can't pull together that's all going to pull together nicely. It's not going to be out of place. Everything's looking good. We're good to put the rest of the screws in now. Again, we're just going to work our way around the board, going diametrically opposed each time. Making sure it's nice and smoothly aligned. Really hydrate. You guys, stop making me go to, need to go for a wee. And then in a minute, guys, you're going to be able to pick some keycaps for the build. We're just going to work our way around, always going diametrically opposed, just making sure it's pulling the keyboard together. How many hydrates to make you take down the can? Uh, there's only about half of it left. Redeem to suggest a poll. A JO1, JO2, Lodestone favourite. You want me to do that as a poll? Okay. Let's do that at the end of the stream. Remind me to do that at the end of the stream trolling, and we will do it then. Because uh, we're going to do a poll in a minute for you guys to pick keycaps. We'll need to redeem a loo break at this rate. You will. I'm, I'm going to have to go for a wee in a minute, I feel. What's my tipple of choice? Uh, it depends on whether I'm drinking wine, beer, or like a top shelf thing. Uh, if I'm drinking wine, usually a white wine, I prefer white to red. Um, maybe a Sancerre, something like that. Uh, if I'm drinking uh, beers, then I tend to prefer proper ales or stouts. Stout. I'm a big. I'm a big fan, fan of um, a couple of different stouts, like chocolate stouts and uh, Thixton's Old Peculiar in particular. Uh, as well as I like a lot of Belgian beers. Belgian beers are usually really, really good. Um, if I'm drinking top shelf, then it's usually whiskey, uh, usually straight, single malt. Depends on what mood I'm in. I do like Brookladdick a lot, a lot as well. I really, really like that as a as a uh, uh, as, as, as a Scotch. Um, so it's usually that. Depends though. Like I have quite a big Scotch collection at home. So it really depends on what mood I'm in. But yeah, something like that. Okay, there we go. The board's built. Nice bit of flex to it. But it's all solid and put together. Right. Okay. There's no OG die sub for this particular board. That board has OG die sub uh, Yugoslavian keycaps on. This board is going to have something a little bit different. And you guys are going to get to pick those now. So I'll tell you what they are whilst I create a poll. Let's flip this keyboard back in now. Come on. <clears throat> okay, so you have some choices. You'll have the choice of GMK Sky Dolch. Uh, I'm going to set this up first and then I'm going to tell you 
uh, I'm going to show you the keycaps. There is also a uh, GMK uh, Bento. I'm going to have to move these to one side, I can't type out. We've got GMK Shoko, round one. We also have uh, GMK Muted. And then finally, we have GMK Analog Dreams. Okay, so I'm going to start the poll. You guys can do that. Whilst you guys are voting in the poll, I'll show you the keycaps. So I'm going to show you them in reverse order. This is GMK Analog Dreams. Lots of pinks and pastel colours. Uh, purples, teals, over a nice white background. GMK Muted. Different shades of grey with both accent kits in there, so we can spice it up a little bit if we want to. <clears throat> GMK Shoko. GMK Bento. I've never actually put that on a board, actually. And then one of my favourite sets of all time, just because it goes with so much, GMK Sky Dolch. So there you go, guys. That is the poll. Take your pick, and we'll see what wins. <sighs> Muted. Yeah, Midnight Rainbow. So I have Midnight Rainbow. It's just on my personal JO2, which is just off stream here. Um, but yeah, that's not one of the choices for this board. But here you go. This is the board. Now you can see the switches. You can see the pom on pom action. You can see the whale logo here, which is really cool. I do like that. And now you guys get to pick some switches. And you know what? Whilst that's running, I'm going to take a very, very quick break and go to the loo. Okay, I'm back. There we go. Muted seems a good match. Can't spot Shoko in good conscience due to no ISO UK. I don't know if the first round has ISO UK or not. I thought the first round did have it. Yeah, the first round has it. Round two hasn't run yet. Well, it has run, but it hasn't shipped yet, sorry. That feels better now. You can you can sell, you can tell me to hydrate again. Oh, an unusual already has. Casper's here as well. He says I'm a bit late. How's your day today? It's been good, man. It's been good. Could have been better. Could have been worse. But yeah. Okay, guys, you've got about a minute and a half left. If you guys are picking which keycaps I'm going to use, uh, Analog Dreams is winning right now, which I'm surprised at. I thought that Shoko had this in the bag. Um, I genuinely thought that Shoko was going to win it. Mrs. Snoozerton, thank you very much for the follow. Captain James, thank you so much for the sub, for the three months of Prime subs. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, just a reminder, guys, that it is September, which means subs are cheaper. Captain James as well, thank you very much for the sub as well. There we go. Oh, wait, I've just said that. I've just said that. I literally just said that twice because it popped up. Um, yeah, but thank you. I do appreciate the subs. Uh, it is September, so you can sub a little bit cheaper. Price for subs has also gone down. Don't forget, you can also throw me a Prime sub if you want to support the channel in any way as well. Someone has probably dropped a lot of points on this. It does tell me at the end if anyone's dropped any points on it. I'll be able to tell you if they have. Um,
Uh, no bits and no channel points have been contributed yet. So no. No one has dropped a load of pints on it. So there you go. Muted is catching up though. With 35 seconds left or so. Uh, Muted is catching up. It's only one vote behind. I thought Shoko would have, have had this in the bag. I genuinely thought that Shoko was going to win this. Kasterberus, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You guys are really spoiling me. Muted. Oh, it's almost there. <clears throat> the whole board is pom. Yeah, this whole board is pom. Plate and case is all pom. Oh, no, it was a tie. Jim K muted and Jim K analog dreams coming in clutch there at the end. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's see. Okay, so someone did drop 13,000 channel bits on one uh, on Muted, and someone dropped 9,000 channel bits on uh, Analog Dreams. So there was some there was some shenanigans going on there. We got there in the end. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, the whole board is pom though. But Kesterus, thank you so much for that sub, man. I really appreciate that. You were close. Right, okay. So what do we do here? I, I think I think that the deciding vote goes to the last person to sub. The last person that shows me to sub right now was Kesterus. If someone subs in the next minute, they will get it. So we'll decide in a minute what, what keycaps we're going to do. But if uh, if no one subs in the next minute, Kesterus gets to pick. If someone does sub in the next minute, then they get to pick which keycaps we use. So... Um, yeah, Jim K Muted and Jim K Anal Dreams, let's get those to one side. <clears throat> Go with a set that hasn't been used much yet. Both of these have never been mounted, these are both brand, oh no, I tell a light, that was mounted on my Jane for like a week, and this one's never been mounted as far as I know. Decide by bribes, yeah. About 20 seconds left. If no one subs, then uh, then Kesterus is going to get the choice. But you can pick the permanent keycap set for this keyboard. Right, okay. We've waited long enough. No one else sub. Kesterus, make a choice, good sir. Analog Dreams or GMK Muted, which would you like to see on my POM whale? Pick wisely, because this set won't leave this keyboard. Muted, right, okay. There we go. GMK Muted is the winner. I'm going to pull out all the accents. Then I don't know how I feel about the accents yet on this board. We'll see. <laughs> right. Okay, chat. Do you want to see any accents at all? And if so, which accents would you like to see? Or do you think we should not use any accents on this board? Let me know. Right. I'm definitely not putting an accent spacebar on because I refuse to do that. So let's uh, let's just put the spacebar on to start with. <clears throat> well spent proto points. Nice. Got to do some blue accents. Some blue accents. Should we do blue escape? Should we do blue escape? Let's do blue escape and let's do the blue iso enter. I think that's it. That's all we're going to use. I think that's it. That's enough, right? Purple escape, blue enter. Okay, if there's a purple escape, we'll use that. I don't know if there is. I think the purples are only for the enter keys. Unless it's in here somewhere, I think the purples are only for the enter keys and the space bars. Yeah, I don't see a purple. In fact, the purple the only purple enter key I have is the numpad enter key, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, I don't have any purple escape or ISO enter. Accent space bars depend entirely on what the keys are accented. I don't really like blue. It is <laughs> yeah, right. Let's uh let's let's see what we can make of this. This is where we do find out that there is in fact a problem with the plate and I did mess it up somewhere along the way. Uh 
blue blue looking real nice though yeah right the wrong shift there yeah Into purple space bar to make up for it. I swapped 10k proto, boy, proto points for a back of lavender seam bear. Uh, no, no. <laughs> 50 million for a J1. That's a joke. I, I wouldn't trade proto points for physical stuff, I'm afraid. Sorry. Sorry to this point. Uh, wait, what? What? Oh, I have the. I forgot I have the. The mod kit that gives me different. Efro, so I can have the, the whole grey Efro on this if I wanted to, but we're not going to do that because I don't like it. did go with stepped caps as well because stepped caps is best if you disagree let me know getting there now. <clears throat> Redeem accent space bar. <laughs> this sounds good, I will try it when I come. Saving the TKLs for last so you're not turning around every five seconds, I see. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't remember where they are. I rarely use TKLs. I mean, I have one here so I can always look at it. But I just don't know, know which bits I need until I look at it. Like, I, I don't really use that set of the TKL. Uh, GHJK. The one thing I do wish this had is row five, right? Row five on this would be godly. Hydrate. Okay, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, I think hydrate is too cheap. What's the board at the very top? This is a UK78, which I'm fixing for a friend. Wait, where does that go? I'm forgetting where everything goes. Today is not a good day for me. I'm very tired. There we go. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, making some good progress now. Oh, we have the windowed. This is cool, actually. We have the windowed stepped caps lock key, so we're going to change for that. Alphas look great with the, the pom. Yeah, it works really well. I genuinely thought that Shoko was going to win this. Like, genuinely thought that Shoko was going to win. And now I need to find an LED to put in the board for that. We'll do that another day. find out that I've got some keys missing in this set. Okay. Almost there now. Okay, it's got print screen, then we've got scroll lock, and then we've got pause, break, just there. Then we've got insert, where's insert? There it is, home and pay drip. Did I save the home key? Yeah. Page up, and then we've got delete, end and page down. That's one key. Wait, do we have not have the right page here? Is that it? There it is. There we go. Okay. Uh, iconic bear, really. Uh, and not my chair, not my problem. Thank you so much for the follows, guys. Matt Vortex, Alex Road as well. Thank you so much for the follows, guys. Appreciate those. Can't keep up with everyone. Um, Epsum as well. Thank you. Esgoom, sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. So here we go, guys. This is a POM Lin Whale. Fully milled POM case. With GMK muted. How clean does that look? And there's the little whale logo. Does it feel, feel a little bit loose? No, just me. It might be the weight on the back. Another setup, my guy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Redeem stretch. Yeah, let's have a stretch. <clears throat> How does my keyboard and car rotation work? Keyboard rotation works on basically what do I feel like using on any given day. Or, alternatively, if Mel's in the office, what does Mel feel like using on any given day? Uh, car rotation basically depends on weather. If it's really nice and bright and sunny, the Datsun comes out. Uh, pretty much any other day, it'll be the Tesla, and any time I need to load something up or take something out, it'll be the pickup truck. With the other cars, all really depends, and they get used on whatever basis needed. But yeah, there we go. This is GMK Muted. This is uh, pretty old. This is GMK Muted ran in 2017, I think, originally. This is a pretty old set, but it looks pretty nice. Windowed keys. Yeah, I need to put an LED under here for that now. Uh, the, the one thing I love about GMK Muted is it has lots of the windowed keys. It also has it on num numlock and scroll lock as well. So I do appreciate that. Some new points reward could be nice though. How about set the keycaps blindfolded? Choose the accent colors, skip song. I'll think of some more. Sounds good. Yeah, Wayward Fox, just drop me a DM. Whatever options you want, we can take a look at putting some in there. Yeah. Jim came Modo Light vibes for sure. Yeah, Modo Light came a long time after this set. Um, this set is a lot older than Modo Light, but yeah, I can appreciate the, the, the similarities between the two. Thank you for the filters. Thank you for the chill stream. No worries, JQ. No worries. I don't use any of the Datsuns in the winter. I have three Datsuns. I don't use any of them in the winter. Where did I put the lid for this? I had a lid for this. Where did I put that? There. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it really depends. Uh, but no, most of the Datsuns don't run in the winter. The pickup truck does, but the other two don't. So yeah. 
Uh, do you like the ABS Shine? I find that some people dislike the Shine and some love the Shine. What's your preference if you have any? I don't mind whether it shines or not. I just prefer ABS to PBT. He says with the main keyboard he's using being PBT OG Cherry Dicebs. <laughs> uh, might have missed any idea when the screw trays are going up on your store. No, I need to work out with Tom when that's going to happen. It shouldn't be too long now. Is it still possible to place an order for the Great Wave desk mats, or do I just chance it on extras? You just have to wait for extras now, I'm afraid. Uh, they're not in stock on the store. The group buy finished ages ago. I have a lot of them in the workshop, so I'm going to ship out the group buy orders next week, and then extras will be listed next Saturday with our big restock of everything. So there's going to be a load of extras listed on the store next Saturday. Uh, we're going to have uh, keycap sets. We're going to have desk mats. You name it, we're going to list it. Artisan trays, PCBs, all sorts of stuff. Whatever I've got lying around the workshop that I can sell will be listed for sale. Missed the whole joke. Sorry, I didn't realise there was a joke there. Being having a whale of a time. Ah, the whale. I get it. Yeah, sorry I missed that yet. Uh, no set time as yet. I'll announce that closer to the time. Keep an eye on Instagram. Keep an eye on Discord. It'll all be announced on there and then via email to all customers later on in the week. <clears throat> so yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's the board, guys. How great does this look? I think this looks fantastic. I'm super happy with how this came out. Should we should we do a quick sound test and see how it sounds? Look at the palm shining in between there. I cut it with the palm shiny side up, so it gives a nice glisten in between. But this looks so good. I'm so happy with this. the The weight does feel a little bit loose. Should we can we see if we can fix this a little bit? Let's just try and adjust this first. It feels like the weight's just a tiny bit loose. Like I can feel it moving slightly. Oh, okay, I see what's happened. The The weight has a bow in it. So the weight has got bowed at some point. So I'll need to fix that and strain it out. That'll be why it felt a little bit loose. Yeah, okay, so I need to, I need to fix the weight on this. Can you see that it's bowed, look guys? The weight just has like a little bow to it. So I'll just need to fix that off stream. I think if we take it steady with the screws, we can probably string it up a little bit here. Okay, yes, that screw's not quite catching. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of tweaking with this. This screw just isn't quite catching in the helicoil. Okay, I think it's better in now than it was before, but I still don't think it's perfect. Okay, it's sat flush now. But I think I think any I, I think what I want to do is when I decide what I'm going to do with the weight, whether I pat patinate it like I have done my iron ones uh, 65 or whether I sandblast it and clear coat it, um, I'll try and fix that warpness to it. Bow-headed whale. Yeah. Right. He says, I think this screw's just slightly loose. I'm just going to just check these. It just feels like there's something slightly loose in here. Let's see if this fixes it. Just giving them all another quarter turn. I don't want to, I don't like to over tighten stuff. Okay, that feels much more solid now. There we go. Right. Uh, I want to thank you so much for the sub. Made it just at the end. Let's do a quick sound test and see how this sounds. But thank you so much for the sub, man. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, I want to. Thank you. Okay, this used to be I want A's board. So for those of you interested, I did buy this from I want A directly. Um, so yeah, let's let's zoom in and let's let's see how she sounds.
That sounds pretty good, right? I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. That sounds pretty good. That's a nice muted clack. It is very clacky, yeah. But it's 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 kind of soft with the clackiness. So yeah, it's it's nice. It's just really nice. That's just it's it's got a little bit of a pop to it. I don't know if the the audio picks it up. But there's just a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a snap to it, um, but not too loud. It's kind of like a muted snap. Uh, pardon the pun on the key set. But yeah, I'm thoroughly happy with that. And that's just nice. That's that's really nice. I wonder if Mel will approve tomorrow because Mel, Mel's going to find this on my desk tomorrow. So let's see, let's see if she approves tomorrow as well. How is the scene? I mean, it's POM, so it's there, but it's not overly visible. So there you go. Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? Need to do something with the weight, get rid of the fingerprints, polish it up or something. I know it's got a bit of scratch in it. That's not too big of a job. I'll probably do a workshop stream where I just polish this up. Um, yeah, if uh, if you guys want to uh, to see what I can do to copper, I can show you something if you'd be interested in that. Let me know. Do you want to see some patinated copper that I've done here in the workshop? Yay or nay, let me know. Clap, 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 clap. Thanks very much, Elspeth. Thank you. Um, looks better in the series. Yeah, it is nice. Are you going to stock double stage springs? Um... I don't know. I have some. I haven't used them yet. If I like them, I might stock them. We'll see. We'll see. Wait with Fox says, I feel like we ask you a lot of questions during the stream. Is there anything you'd like to ask us before the end of the stream? Yeah. What's the best keyboard you guys have ever bought? Put your notes in chat. And what are your favorite keycaps? Uh, and I don't mean colorway. I mean profile. What's your favorite board you've ever bought? And what's your favorite profile of keycaps? Those are two questions I'm always interested in hearing more from people about. You want to see it? Yeah, okay, I'll go go right in a second. I am going to infill the whale logo. I'm going to try and do it to match this muted grey. So I'm going to get some paints and we'll infill this. Uh, in fact, I might do it in some porcelain ceramic uh, infill. That could be quite fun. Uh, maybe we do Maybe we do a workshop stream soon where we patinate the weight and we do the infill all at the same time. Maybe we'll try and do that soon. But yeah, guys, you put into uh, into the chat what your favourite keyboard that you've ever bought is and also what your favourite key cap profile is. And I'll go grab my i 165 so you guys can see what I've got. Okay, I am back. I am here and I have a box. Let's zoom the camera back out. There we go. Big chungus trays. Palm keyboard to the side. Okay, so this is the base of my IM165. And basically, I patinated this myself in the workshop the other week. Um, I've done this a few times before, but I wanted to try and do it in a bit of a different way. So what we did here is we had a big tub, and that tub had some, uh, well, it had some chemicals in the bottom. I'm not sure how much I can say on Twitch about this. But it had some chemicals in the bottom. Um, it was basically ammonia, right? It's just ammonia in like a in like a prototype is mug of all things. And then we raised up out of the solution the keyboard part, and we sprayed it down with a mixture of vinegar and salt. So it's basically salted vinegar, uh, just standard vinegar, white vinegar, and standard salt flakes all mixed together, and we sprayed it. And this is what we came out with. So this is an experimental piece. It's been clear coated all on the base. But this is an experimental piece just to see how we could get different reactions in different ways so you can see here where we used a, a broad spray you can see here where we poured on all across the bottom edge and you can see here where we used a thick spray and this is how it came out it has been clear coated over the top the next job look how blue that is so this is with salted vinegar and ammonia 
it smells really bad at the minute still. So that's what we did for this one. Um, we haven't cleaned up the edges yet, so we need to clean up the inside because you can see where it got splashed and things on the inside. So all of this needs to be cleaned up uh, and then we clean up all of the edges as well because it's on the edges. So we're going to clean up all of those so we don't affect any tolerances or fitment. But yeah, that's what the base looks like. It's really cool. That would go well with GMK Copper. Yeah. I did another board as well. So there's another UK78 that we've done with very much the same finish. Let me show you that, guys, as well. I'll be back in a second. Because you like this one, too. So for this one, the owner wanted to be able to see more of the copper. So you can see more of the, the brownish coppery tinge. And then it has all of this lovely blue there, the UK 78 case. So there we go. These are all clear coated, all nice and safe to touch. This one needs sorting out on the inside though. So the inside will rub off of my fingers, but it's all safe to touch. So there we go. That's uh, that's what some forced patination has done. Now, we've been experimenting with different things. The thick spray looks burr self. Yeah, the thick spray is probably a bit too much, but the thin spray comes out really nicely. Don't like how the pooling works. So then on this one, we did a mixture of thick spray around the edges and then thin spray on top. And it came out really nice. You like the thick spray? Such contrast. Yeah, it looks it just, just looks great, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's what we've been doing. So we're going to do some more of this on some more of my boards. We're probably going to do it to the base of this. We'll try and get it this pale blue so we get it to match this as much as possible, I think. But yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll do that as a workshop stream really soon. So yeah, so that's the stream, guys. Thank you very much for being here. It's now time to find someone to raid. So who should we raid? Who should we raid? Is there anyone online and streaming right now that you think we should raid? And I'm going to go through all of your answers about the different keycaps as well later on. Because it's really inf interesting to me. It helps me decide what to stock. Yes to the weight and info stream. Cool, we'll do that. Clarabelle and Cherry profile, interesting. Jelly Epoch so far. SA profile and a Switch Couture Alice, nice. Some good answers in here. Some good answers in there. Okay, okay, nice. Thick spray meaning it's it's how we, if you look at the small camera, it's how we put the... the the spray bottle has different settings on it, so you can have like a thick gushing spray, or you can have like a thin dribble, you can have like a nice mist. This is more of a mist on this side, and this was more of a thick splurge spray, that's all. How long will it take for the smell to clear though? Uh, about 24 hours of just being in open air, doesn't take long. Right, let's see who we can raid today. Who would you recommend guys? Anyone you would like to see streaming uh, today that we can raid? Oh, we could, uh, hmm, who's, who's streaming? We could, uh, we could raid Source MS. Yeah, let's, uh, let's raid Source MS. He's building a Samus. So let's do just that. Let's raid Source MS. Okay. I'm going to set the raid up. Guys, thank you very much for being here. I'm going to be back streaming again tomorrow night, building the rest of my, or some part of the rest of my LEGO Millennium Falcon. So please do come and check that out. Um, once we've done that as well, we'll also be streaming a couple of times this week, keyboard builds, because there's a few things I want to catch up on. Uh, thank you so much for being here and watching. I hope you liked the Pom Whale as much as I did. I thoroughly enjoyed that build. I thought it was really good fun. Really, really happy with how the board came out. Muted by Custerbus was a great choice uh, from the, uh, the, the draw that we had with Analog Dreams. Thank you very much for that. Let's go uh, Let's go check out what uh, Source MS is building today. He's building a Samus. Tell him that we hope his stream goes really, really well. And yeah, just let's enjoy his stream. Thanks very much for being here, guys. I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.